Example 166. At the 1% significance level, test the claim that there is a positive linear relationship between a mother's height and her daughter's height. Okay, so this problem is asking us to test a hypothesis, and the hypothesis is that it has a positive linear relationship. So we're talking about the parameter beta 1, and the reason why we're saying that is that to say it's a positive linear relationship means the slope is greater than zero. So what we're going to do is write the symbol beta 1, not with the hat, without the hat, because beta 1 is the population version of that. And we're going to say it's greater than zero because this is the idea of a positive linear relationship. It would mean the slope is positive, which means the line increases. All right, now from there, we're going to have HOHA. HOHA is very familiar. We've done this before. If it has a greater than symbol, it would be the same as HA because that's one of HA's symbols. So we'll use beta 1 greater than 0 for the HA. For the HO, we'll just express the opposite idea, which is less than or equal to 0. And mainly, we're thinking of the idea of uh, equal to 0 here when we run the test. Okay, from there, we're going to have to get the data step. Now, normally, the data step is a simple matter of writing down what the problem has given you, but here, they didn't give us much. Um, we could go through all the crunching of numbers to get the data that we need to ultimately form our test stat but I'm going to shortcut just a little bit of it because we've done it so many times before in the previous videos. So what I'm going to do is just show you essentially the answers for um, some of the values that we're going to need. So the things we're normally going to need, and hopefully again your professor will provide you with at least this much on the test when you have to do this. You'll have the sum of squares for xy, and I'm going to give that to us so it's 28.3 in this case. And then we'll have the sum of squares for the x values and that's going to be 46. And then finally, we're going to need the sum of squares for the y values. And in this case, that's going to be 40.975. So this was tabulated from this data in the traditional way we normally do. So we have all those formulas. And essentially, we have to work with the data by summing these columns, then taking the product of the columns and summing that. And then once we have that, we square each of the columns and we add up those. And with all those totals, we can then fill in each of these individual formulas. Now, we've done that before in previous problems, so I'm going to start from here. Now, once we have that, we're going to do a couple other things. We get these, and then we're going to go ahead and nab uh, beta 1 hat. And to do that is very simple. It's just going to be the mixed term SSXY over the X term SSXX. So since we have these values given to us here, we're going to just put them in a fraction. 280, or 28, sorry, 0.3 divided by 46 will give us. 28.3 divided by 46. It gives us 0 0.615, let's say, 22. That's enough decimal places probably to keep us from having any rounding issues later. All right, so I'm going to keep that number. I'm actually going to store it in X so we don't have to round it at all, but I'll have it there. So that'll be my beta 1. And you could actually store it in B if you're using a calculator like this. It'll actually use different letters. I just stored it as X. From there, we're going to take that number and move on to the next part of the problem. The next part is going to be to come up with the SSE, the sum of square for error. So the error sum of squares is basically SSYY minus the slope estimator times the mixed term XY. This is the formula that we've used in the past. The yy here is 40.975 minus the beta 1 hat we just calculated. So I'm just going to write that in here rather than write on all the decimals, right? Because I'm going to use the full thing in my calculator. And then multiply by the mixed term, which is 28.3. All right, let's see what that gives us then. So remember, I have that number in my calculator in beta 1 hat. So 40.975 minus, I stored that number as x and then I'm going to multiply by 28.3. Once I'm done, I get the answer 23.5643, etc. right? It's going to keep going from there, so I'm just going to dot, dot, dot it. That number, that SSE, I'm going to store in my calculator again, so I don't have to use any rounding. So I'm going to store that in the, in this case, I'm going to use E for the variable. So SSE, I'll use E for that. OK, so I'm just doing that so I don't have to round it later on. Now I have the beta 1 hat. I have SSE. From there, what I'm going to do is then figure out what my S value is. S is going to be important for us. So remember, we're going to move from this to beta 1, and then from there to SSE. Our next stop on the way is to get S. Now S is pretty straightforward. It's the square root of SSE over n minus 2. 
So for us, we know that SSE is this 23 value, 23.5643 dot dot dot, divided by the n minus 2. The n is the number of original pairs we were given. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six original pairs given to us. So if we take away 2, we end up with 4. And then we take the square root of that, and that will give us approximately what s is. All right, so let's do that then. We have the 23 value in my calculator. I'm going to divide it by 4. And when I'm done, I'm going to take the square root. So I'm going to raise mine to the half power. That's the same as taking a square root. And we get 2.427, you know, 2, let's say, if I round off. Okay, so we have the S. Now that number becomes important in our next step. And this is the final uh, bit of work that we're going to do to uh, finish the data step, essentially. And that is to get this quantity S beta 1 hat. This is the standard error of the slope estimator beta 1 hat. And what we're going to do then is just simply fill out this fraction. The fraction is going to be the s value divided by the square root of, and here we have just the ssxx value. So the s value from before was 2.427, and I'm going to do dot 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 because I'm not going to round that like we did here. And then I'm going to divide by the square root of ssxx, and that number is 46. All right, let's see what that gives us. So I have the value of my calculator still from s, so I'm just going to divide that by the square root of 46. Okay, and so finally I get the answer is 0 0.35786. And then, you know, dot, dot, dot after that. Again, I'm dot, dot, dotting it because we're going to need it for the next step, so I'm going to try not to round it. Okay, so. Let's uh, think of one thing here. I stored in x my beta 1 hat. I don't know if you remember that. Or sorry, this value here. This is the number I stored in my calculator, beta 1 hat as x. Now I'm going to store this as s in my calculator. Again, you don't have to store it. You can just write it down. I'm just doing that so that when I do my calculation, I don't have to worry about rounding it or anything. OK, now from there, we're on to our test stat part. Our test stat is pretty simple. We're just going to forward in the following fraction, basically. We're going to say that our t test statistic is going to be made up of, again, let me just end these steps here. So claim HOHA, the data, now our test stat. It's going to be made up of a very simple fraction, which is nice. We just have to do beta 1 hat divided by s for beta 1 hat, the standard error for beta 1 hat. And when we do that, we will have our test stat. So let's go ahead and work that out very quickly then. I have these numbers in my calculator as x, which was beta 1, and I'm going to divide that by the s value that I stored my error under. And when I'm done, I get the number 1.719, 1.719. So that is our test stat for the problem. From here, what we're going to do, of course, is to draw a bell curve, a T-shaped curve, and we're going to find a critical value. So on the bell curve, remember, we have a regular traditional bell curve for the T distribution. The center is at zero. We're going to look at this HA and determine that it's a right-tailed test because that symbol points to the right. And then based on that, we'll say that we're looking for the area in this tail to be whatever alpha was in the problem. Now alpha was given to us as 1%, so I'm going to go ahead and say that all the areas in this one tail, 0.01. Finally, I need degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for this problem is going to be n minus 2. So n minus 2 for us is going to simply be the n that we were given in the problem, which is 6, take away 2, that's going to be 4. So all together, we're going to go to our chart now, the t-chart. We're going to look at 0.01 with 4 degrees of freedom and see what that gives us for our critical value that will be located right here on our drawing. Okay, so we're in the 0.01 column with 4 degrees of freedom. We get the answer 3.747. Okay, so we found the value 3.747. So now that we have our critical value, our next step of the process is going to be to match that against our test stat and see where our test stat lands. Since we've got a pretty small sample size, our critical value is way out in the tail here. And so what that means is that when we look at our test stat and where it lands on the curve, we're going to say, hey, this test stat lands inside the do not reject area. So we're going to say we do not reject the null hypothesis. So do not reject. HO and therefore do not support HA. Do not support 
H A. And now looking at our claim, which one is our claim closest to? Is it H O or H A? And we could say, well, clearly the claim is the same as H A in this problem. So we're going to go ahead and use this wording. I'm going to say the sample data does not support the claim. The sample data does not support the claim. So the sample data does not support the claim. The claim. And what does that mean here? Well, you know, by the way, we should say at the end here, at the 1% significance level, right? So two points about this. The first one is, what, is it, what does it mean to say it doesn't support the claim? Well, it's basically saying that there isn't a positive relationship between daughter's heights and mother's heights. And certainly there wouldn't be a negative relationship. So that's basically saying there's no simple linear relationship between the two of them. Um, now, I said that the 1% significance level, because remember, this test stat wasn't that small, really, but the problem was twofold. One, we had a pretty uh, strict alpha level, the 0.01 means that you know, we're, we're, not, we're trying to protect from the type 1 error, so we're trying not to reject a true null hypothesis. So that, of course, puts our critical value, our rejection region, a little further out in the tail. And the other issue is we have a very small sample size. So the combination of the two produces a critical value that's pretty far out there. This thing is almost four, you know, and so you've got to get pretty extreme results from your test statistic to end up rejecting the null hypothesis here. So this could simply be a scenario where essentially the small sample size has harmed our ability to uh, reject the null hypothesis. And uh, in this case, you know, perhaps maybe a larger sample would, would do it just fine. And in reality, a study like this, you know, sample points would be very easy to get a hold of. But for calculation purposes in our class, you know, it's a lot of work to do the crunching of the numbers with a large sample size. So we only took uh, six values. And because of that, perhaps that's why we landed in here. Because I would think or suspect that probably mother's heights and daughter's heights are related. On the other hand, there is, of course, another parent involved. And so the father could have something to do with it, too. But uh, another thing, just to think this out a little further, would be that um, generally women like to marry men that are taller than them. So uh, for the most part, that's true. And when that happens, of course, it would mean that the father's height would be linked to the mother's height because the mother would choose a mate who's taller. And so generally, again, tall mothers would generally produce taller daughters because both parents contributing genes to the population, to the you know, daughter would end up being tall or short, depending on the family structure. So um, and there might be some mix here where, you know, maybe a short woman marries a very tall guy that could happen and vice versa. And so maybe the father's genes are interfering or maybe there's a, a gene hidden in the genetics somewhere that has a short gene when the mother may be tall or something like that. But in general, this test that um, looks like something that would reject the null in a traditional Z test for a lot of alpha levels. but or at least for a couple of alpha levels, and uh, it doesn't do it here, partly because of the small sample size and the extreme alpha value.